The movie begins in a prestigious Japanese athlete school, Saitoku. One rainy day, a student named Fuwa is standing on the roof. He is a kendo major and is carrying a bag of supplies, alongside a sword. Suddenly, lightning strikes a massive rock in front of the school, which creates an array of mysterious energy. Fuwa jumps off the building and levitates because of the force. The scene cuts to a year later. Fuwa disappeared that day and has been forgotten over time. We are introduced to the protagonist of the film and an archery major, Aoi. He is the best student in his class but isn't confident in his skills. Because of that reason, he hasn't been able to win any competitions for himself or for the school. Aoi's childhood best friend, Haruka, is also his classmate and is always encouraging him. It is a normal day in Saitoku school when all of a sudden, lightning hits the magical rock for the second time. It is followed by heavy rainfall, which surprises everyone since it was a bright day some seconds ago. Soon, the kids find out the droplets of water are actually warm blood. Before they comprehend what is going on, hundreds of cicadas emerge from the soil and fly everywhere. Then, the buildings around the school disappear and are replaced by a vast forest. As the football players watch the forest bewildered, a group of samurai in traditional clothing appear out of the mist. They instantly start slaughtering the kids one after another. Boy, this movie took no time to get going. Chaos ensues as the samurai spread around the school and violently kill everyone in their way. Aoi and Haruka try to save their lives but are caught by a killer. He manages to cut Aoi's palm, but before he lands a second attack, Kota saves them. Kota is Aoi's friend and the captain of the kendo club. Being an experienced kendo fighter, he is the one man who can survive against the invaders. The three run into a relatively safe classroom where Haruka covers Aoi's injury with a handkerchief. They plan to stay there until it is safe but are quickly discovered. While running away, Kota offers to fight the enemy and asks them to get their weapons from the archery club. Aoi and Haruka run to the club while witnessing piles of their classmates' and teachers' bodies lying on the ground. Aoi is also interested in Japan's history and the heroes of the past. Judging by the invaders' weapons, he assumes that they're from the time of the Okahazama War. The theory is crazy because it would mean the entire school has time-traveled to the past. Soon, the surviving students compose themselves and start fighting back using their respective areas of expertise. The leaders of different clubs like boxing, fencing, and martial arts take initiative to fight and save others. At one point, the battle shifts to the football field and grows more violent. A samurai is about to kill a girl but is in Aoi's line of attack. However, he freezes and Haruka saves the girl in the nick of time. She slaps Aoi in his face, ordering him to get his act together. Being nervous in a simple archery competition is acceptable, but he must learn to protect a friend in need at any cost. Suddenly, they are interrupted by the arrival of a masked warlord named Yanada. He orders the kids to surrender the castle, referring to the school. Kota asks everyone to keep their ground, but there are too many enemies and too few of them. Suddenly, the science club throws little smoke bombs from the rooftop and scares the ancient soldiers, nerds to the rescue. Yanada is about to retaliate when an informer tells him that the army led by Lord Matsudaira is approaching the castle. Yamada and Matsudaira have a year-long rivalry, and Yamada knows going against Matsudaira's army will be the end of his troops. Hence, he calls his people to retreat, but not without abducting as many survivors as they can. The students try to defend themselves and their friends, but can only protect some. More than a dozen students are taken hostage, while the others can do nothing but cry. After everything calms down, a student checks the school's surroundings using a drone and sees that the entire city has vanished. The only building left is their school. A while later, Lord Matsudaira arrives, as expected. Unlike Yamada's troops, his people are not violent, but they push the students into the basketball court for safety. The students start to panic, unaware of where they are and where their friends have been taken. To reduce their anxiety, Aoi speaks up, since he has the most knowledge about ancient Japan. Don't freak out, guys. We just got warped to the past and all the danger is real. He reveals that they have somehow entered the 15th century, also known as the Sengoku period. The Battle of Okihazama is about to take place, which is the deadliest and most cruel internal war Japan has ever faced. To make matters worse, their school seems to be the epicenter. Thanks, Aoi. The battle will be between the Oda clan and the Imagawa clan. The man who attacked them earlier, Yadama, was an ally of the Oda clan, which would eventually win the battle despite being outnumbered. Moreover, the man who is currently holding them hostage, Matsudaira, was an ally of the Imagawa clan, which is said to lose the war. 
Even after losing the war, Matsudaira will become one of the three great unifiers of Japan who shapes the country into what it is today. If the students stay in the school, they will get in the middle of the battle and probably die. They panic and start revolting, but Kota stops everyone. He reminds them that any decision taken hastily might put their lives at risk even before the battle. The smart step would be to allow Aoi to form a plan since he knows exactly how the battle is going to play out. The pressure of everyone's hopes is too much for Aoi, but he remembers what Haruka told him earlier and calms down. He and Kota present themselves to Matsudaira as the leaders of their group. Since they do not belong to either of the battling clans, Matsudaira thinks they are lying and commands his soldiers to kill them. Aoi quickly makes them halt by suggesting that they work together. He knows that Matsudaira's current aim is to deliver war supplies to a castle of their allies. However, the enemy Oda force has built two camps right in front of the castle to stop its connection with the rest of the world. Aoi suggests they attack the first camp to divert the enemy's attention while the main troops secretly transfer the supplies. He is sure the plan will work because he has learned about it in history books. Matsudaira calls him a dork. I mean, discloses that the kidnapped students have been hidden in the same camp, so this will not only be a distraction but also a rescue mission. He agrees to make the deal with the students and praises Aoi for his quick thinking. However, Aoi's people should be the ones to go on the mission because Matsudaira doesn't want to get his hands dirty. The members of several clubs bravely volunteer to participate, but they still fall short compared to the 500 armies of the Oda. Everyone expects Aoi to join, but he surprises them with his cowardice, claiming that he has to stay in the school to find out a way to return home. Somewhere else in the camp, the students who were abducted are thrown into sheds. The boys are made to labor for several hours with no food or water, while the girls are taken advantage of. In the evening, the students light a bonfire on the football field, getting ready for the upcoming battle. Haruka tells Aoi that he has so much more potential than he lets on. She wants him to face his fears and come to the battle for his friends. After thinking about it for a long time, Aoi gathers enough courage and agrees. In the following scene, he makes an elaborate plan, assigning every student a task that they are the best in. He also picks a safe spot where they should gather if they were to be separated. For the entire night, the group prepares for the battle and sets off for the enemy camp in the morning. In the meantime, the abducted students are abused by the Oda soldiers. They killed a girl last night after abusing her for hours and have come to pick up two more girls. Suddenly, the emperor of the Oda clan, Nobunaga, arrives and kills his own soldiers, claiming that he doesn't allow animalistic behavior against women, even though they are at war. He is later joined by a soldier named Toyotomi, Despite being from the rival clan, Toyotomi and the Emperor will join hands with Matsudaira in the future and the trio will become the great unifier of modern day Japan. They are the most important characters in the history of Japan and mustn't die in the upcoming war for history to remain the same. Meanwhile, in school, the students figure out that time travel was possible because the lightning that hit the sacred rock changed its magnetic field. If they are able to hit it again with the same magnitude, there is a chance they will return to the future. Yeah, that checks out. After finding out that the next rainfall will occur at midday tomorrow, they begin making lightning rods. A guy from the sports club sets off to look for the rescue team and inform them to return before midday. However, their plan is ruined when the rescue team is attacked by the Oda troops, led by the last great unifier, Toyotomi. A fight ensues and Haruka is captured by the rivals. Aoi tries to kill them but is scared that the arrow will hit Haruka instead. Kota also notices her struggling and runs to her rescue only to be stabbed from behind and killed. While the enemies take Haruka away, Aoi shoots for the first time. It stabs a man but they manage to escape nonetheless. Aoi is devastated to his core and blames himself for his friend's death and Haruka's abduction. The rescue team helplessly runs back to Matsudaira's camp and takes shelter. Matsudaira later finds Aoi crying beside Kota's grave. He promises to make Japan peaceful and starts teaching Aoi the art of kendo. Aoi used to be in the kendo club with Kota long ago. He revisits the things he was taught and practices for the rest of the night. In the meantime, Haruka is thrown into the shed with her other friends. The warlord Yanada, who made the first attack, arrives and is happy to see the prisoners still alive. He takes off his mask for the first time and reveals that he is Fuwa, the student who jumped into the rock at the beginning of the film. He is a psychopath who knew about the sacred stone and its powers. He deliberately used it to enter the 15th century and change the course of the entire Japanese history with his knowledge of the past. 
He mocks his former schoolmates for being naive and wants to be known as a leader in the future. His principles are cruel and are sure to make Japan a worse place if he makes changes at such a pivotal time in history. The following morning, the rescue group led by Aoi is ready to fight yet again. They are approached by the informant, who reveals that they only have six hours until the rainfall, which might be their last chance to return home. Aoi riles up the troops and initiates the invasion. The group separates into three teams. The first one is the baseball team, which lands a direct attack on the camp. They attack from a few yards away, using flaming balls, which gives them an upper hand. The second team consists of the leaders of the fencing and karate club. Their job is to sneak into the camp and attack from the inside. The last team consists of the smartest members of the group, including Aoi. They are the ones who look for their friends and rescue them, while the rest of the group is distracting the enemies. The baseball team does its best and fights until the end. They ultimately manage to take control of the area, but most of the group is killed or heavily injured. In the meantime, the leader duo is also surrounded by guards on the other side of the camp. They manage to kill one skilled swordsman, but the other one kills the leader of the karate club. Enraged by his friend's death, the fencing leader rises from the ground and fights with all his might. He is heavily injured in the end, but manages to kill the rival. Meanwhile, the survivors from the first team enter the camp and find two abducted students. They are overjoyed for a few seconds before their beloved leader of the baseball team is shot with an arrow. Knowing that he won't survive the injury, he volunteers to keep the archers away so the rest of the group can run to safety. Somewhere else, the final team, with Aoi, enters the second barrier and sees that there is still a horde of enemy soldiers waiting to fight them. Their win is almost impossible, but they do not back down and attack the horde fearlessly. They finally reach the shed and rescue the survivors, but Haruka is taken away by two guards. Aoi follows them and is surrounded by Fuwa's army. Seconds before he is killed, Matsudaira arrives with his troops and saves him. The dying battle picks up with their arrival, and the students gain confidence to fight back harder. Suddenly, Fuwa brings out a rifle and fires at Aoi. Matsudaira comes in the way and saves him, but is in turn shot. With his last breath, he gives Aoi his sword and assigns him to fulfill his dream of unification. His death means that Fuwa was able to change Japanese history forever. Since there are only three hours left to return home, Aoi asks Haruka to take all the survivors back to school. He plans to stay until he kills Fuwa and avenges Matsudaira's death. In the next scene, Aoi and Fuwa face each other while the third unifying leader, Toyotomi, protects Fuwa. The man claims that he doesn't care about the future of Japan and kills Toyotomi to make another major change in the future just because he can. In a final showdown, Aoi goes against Fuwa, but cannot keep up with his skills. Haruka returns to save him when he is about to be killed, but Fuwa injures her leg, asking her to stay away. Suddenly, Aoi gets a vision of everyone that has died in the war. With renewed motivation, he attacks Fuwa and takes his life. We see that Toyotomi is not yet dead, which means there is still a chance of history repeating itself. Aoi then brings Haruka back to school just before the lightning hits. However, he decides to stay in the past to replace Matsudaira and ensure Japan has a bright future. He hugs Haruka before wishing her farewell. Then, the lightning strikes, and Aoi sets off back to the past on his horse. The scene cuts to a few weeks later, when school is on its way to normalcy after so much chaos. One day, Haruka reads an article about the portrait of young Matsudaira being found in a historical site. It is a portrait of Aoi wearing the pattern of the handkerchief that she used to cover his wound in the battle. In the last clip, she bursts into happy tears, proud of Aoi for fulfilling his aim. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.